What's up, Roto Grinders? Welcome to another edition of FanDuel Friday. I am your host, TJ Zwarich, and I'm solo today. It's just me breaking down this FanDuel slate, but that doesn't mean we're not still going to be bringing you some top tier content. I'm going to be breaking this one down by myself. But we got a nice size eight game slate on FanDuel this Friday for the NBA. And we got some good games. We got some players already ruled out. We got some tight, high spreads. And we got some value. We got some spend ups. And we're ready to break down this one for you. So we're going to start things off with the Sacramento and Indiana game. We're not going to go game by game. We're just going to talk strategy like we always do. But this one in particular is one we got to focus on right off the bat because we got Sacramento and Indiana, a two and a half point spread game is in Indiana. You would usually think this one would be one for uh, Sacramento to, to handle quite easily, but we got Tyrese Halliburton maybe back for Indiana but this is a back-to-back, and so you never know. We could end up seeing him sit this one still. Um, and we already have De'Aaron Fox ruled out for the Sacramento Kings today. And so with that being said, we got some value here on this team already. It's Davion Mitchell Chalk Knight, $3,800. This to me is a strong, good uh, value option. This is good chalk. He's $3,800. You're not typically going to get that type of value on uh, FanDuel as they've been really good at pricing people up lately. And so a $3,800 Davion Mitchell, I think is going to be one of the first players you're looking to put into cash games today as a value play. And then Malik Monk is probably going to step in off the bench and get a lot of extra usage today without um, De'Aaron Fox. If I'm running 150 lineups, maybe I include somebody like a Terrence Davis in my pool. But focusing on sort of a single entry optimal or even a three to ten lineup style approach, my focuses are going to be Davion Mitchell, Malik Monk, and Damana Sabonis, with maybe some hints of Kevin Herter and uh, Harrison Barnes in this one as well. And then if I am doing that, I want to run it back with somebody on the Indiana side. If Halliburton plays, I think he's a very strong play. Miles Turner today is a very strong play for tournaments. And then if all of a sudden we get Halliburton out, it opens up the door for McConnell to be probably the best play on the slate. Um, Buddy Heald, Benedict Mathurin, maybe even a little bit of Andrew Nemard as well. Um with all of those things, considering this is going to be one of the most interesting games we can stack of the night. We also have Charlotte and Detroit with a one point spread and a high total here on this one. Well, mellow ball at $9,100 still underpriced here. As long as he's not sitting on a second half of a back to back, I think Lamelo ball is one of the first plays you're plugging into cash games today. Obviously he's one of means core plays $9,100. He's going to be chalky, but he deserves to be at that price tag. Terry Rozier, Mason Plumley, fine tournament plays. If Gordon Hayward's playing on the second half of a back to back here, then uh, he's somewhat interesting for tournaments as well, I think. But if he's out sitting on the second half of this back-to-back, then we can look to guys like Jalen McDaniels. If you're running 150, maybe you keep a Mark Williams in your pool as well. Maybe you're putting Dennis Smith Jr. in there. But that would be, uh, you'd need uh, some people sitting for Charlotte to go that way. And you'll get that news before lock. That's a 7 eight o'clock start. So, on the Detroit side of things, plenty of decent tournament run back options, but nobody that really stands out as a super strong play outside of Alec Burks coming in at 5K, projected for 28 minutes, 28 fantasy points, 45% inter, uh, projected ownership today. And so I think he's a great cash game play, but at that ownership is going to be somebody I'm looking to get underweight on in tournaments. We just have so many close spreads in this one. Portland going up against Washington. No Yusuf Nurkic. Jeremy Grant is questionable. Drew Eubanks is looking like one of the better value plays on the slate as it stands with that center and power forward eligibility. Damian Lillard looking like one of the strongest payup options on the slate here. Um, if Jeremy Grant is out as well, all of a sudden Josh Hart looks even better. You can maybe even include somebody like a Nasir Little in your lineup as well. Maybe even a trend, a trend in Watford. Um, and so very interesting spot for Portland today. And then running it back on the Washington side, I never mind getting to somebody like a Kristaps Porzingis in tournaments today. 
So much potential value. Joel Embiid is questionable. If he's in, he gets one of the best matchups possible, although in a big spread against San Antonio. You see he's projected for almost 60 points here. Highest projected play on the slate. Joel Embiid today is going to be a very strong option, especially if this one happens to stay close today. If he's out, Montrez Harrell, maybe even Paul Reed, uh, become uh, in play here for tournaments. James Harden is underpriced and would become one of the best tournament plays on the slate. Tobias Harris uh, becomes in play as well here. On the Sa- San Antonio side, one of the reasons this game is so interesting is because we got Trey Jones already ruled out for this one. Trey Jones is out. Devin Vassell has been out for a long time. So Josh Richardson at 5,500 is looking like one of the best value players coming at 55% ownership. That is something that in tournaments, I think I'd probably want to be underweight on, but he is one of the first guys you're putting into uh, optimals and cash games today. Keldon Johnson and uh, Jakob Pertle maybe are fine. You can get to them in tournaments, but the big guy is going to be Josh Richardson that you're wanting to get to maybe some Malachi Branham playing the point guard position today, but that one position should be occupied by Josh Richardson and Branham today. So those are the two guys that I'm wanting to go to with Trey Jones. Ah, sorry, my chair just fell down on me here with Trey Jones as well as uh, Devin Vassell still out for this one. We got Rudy Gobert questionable. Now he had been playing and then uh, with, with all of these Q tags lately, but with him, he happened to sit last game. Now this took a lot of people off guard, but still, we managed to make the pivots after lock to a guy like Nazarene and Nazarene will be one of the better value plays on the slate. If Rudy Gobert is out for this one, Jaden McDaniels is somebody that I usually only like getting to. If Gobert is out and D'Angelo Russell and Anthony Edwards are both very interesting tournament options to me today. D'Angelo Russell at 7,200 is somebody that I kind of view as underpriced here. I keep checking my phone as I see Twitter notifications, hoping it's going to be something to do with uh, injury reports. And it's just just more uh, filler stuff that is not relevant to the show. Toronto gets one of the best possible matchups that you can get going up against Houston here. Um, still no OG Ananobi for them. So guys like uh, Chua and Trent and Barnes all picking up a little bit of extra minutes, but they've been kind of priced up for this situation. So it's really just uh, maybe I would take shots on a Barnes or Van Vliet in tournaments. Um, and then Pascal Siakam has a nice price tag as well. Houston is undermanned. They got still no Jalen Green, still no Kevin Porter Jr. Deshaun Nix is $4,300, but he's not really somebody that has been producing at a high fantasy point per minute rate. And so I don't know how much Jay Sean Nix I'm interested to getting to the player. I like getting to in this situation is Eric Gordon. His usage rate goes way up without these guys on the courts. Eric Gordon is my favorite play on Houston here. And then if we happen to get Jabari Smith out, Kenyon Martin becomes even more interesting than he already is. Tari Eason is a guy that is just such a strong fantasy point per minute producer that if he happens to get 28 minutes here, even at that 6K price tag, he could still do some damage. Obviously, last game he had that um, moment where he missed like eight layups and got all of his rebounds and add the stocks there. That's one of the reasons he put up 50. I don't know if we can see that replicated, but that was also in 19 minutes. If he can get up to 30 minutes here with uh, Jabari Smith out, all of a sudden this could be a very dangerous player. And Alperin Shangun going up against Toronto is a strong play, but I do potentially worry about the pace of this one and him being able to keep up on the Toronto side. So that's one of the reasons why I do really like Pascal Siakam here in this spot. And then the final game of the slate, the late night hammer at 9 p.m. later than all the other games, we have Atlanta going up against Utah. One point spread. Both of these teams have over 120 point total. On the Utah, on the Atlanta side of things, sorry, I think Trey Young is very interesting for tournaments. I think DeJounte Murray, who's been playing great basketball and is still priced under 9K, is a phenomenal tournament play. I do have a lot of interest in DeAndre Hunter and John Collins for tournaments. I think they're in great spots with their price tags today. And then on the Utah side of things, Lori Markinen has just play, been playing phenomenal. Walker Kessler seems to be a player that any given night can go up for five plus blocks. And on FanDuel, that is leads him to a massive price tag. So although the minutes are a worry with that price tag, if you're only playing a few lineups, if you're running 150, you definitely want to keep him in your pool. 
And then guys like Jordan Clarkson, Malik Beasley. Um, these are players I'm interested in taking shots in on for tournaments. Mike Conley at that ownership and price tag is somebody I think I'm going to be looking to fade. Looking at the slate as a whole here, I think LaMelo Ball is going to be your number one priority, followed by Demonis Sabonis in terms of spend-ups, ownership aside. And then if you are looking to get away from that ownership a little bit, keep an eye on this Philly situation. Joel Embiid, uh, I think, has the highest ceiling on the slate. And then if he happens to be out, uh, James Harden is probably going to be the best play on the slate. And I think my favorite contrarian spend-up today is going to be Anthony Edwards, $9,700 $9,700 at that 8K price tag. We're looking at Josh Richardson as being our pri- our best value of the slate. Malik Monk and uh, um, Davion Mitchell are great value plays as well. But I think a pivot to somebody like a Kevin Herter or someone in this late game in, in Atlanta like uh, DeAndre Hunter in that 5K range, those are great ways, I think, to uh, save salary today. And Drew Eubanks, I think, is some decent chalk in this one as well. That'll do it for this edition of FanDuel Friday. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up in the Roto Grinders Discord. You can find me on Twitter, TJ underscore Zwarch5, and I'm happy to answer them and help you out on this slate. So thank you to FanDuel for sponsoring the show. And on behalf of myself, Steve, our wonderful producer behind, behind the scenes, and our whole Roto Grinders crew. We'll see you next Friday. Peace. 